Gentleman for yielding, and I, I want to first start out by thanking my friend and colleague, uh, Congressman Smith, for, for being one of the most steadfast leaders in this nation. Not tonight, not for this one hour of a special order tonight, but for decades, Chris, for standing up for life and what's right. And I, I, I am a proud to associate with you. And today, as we uh, went out on the mall here, for those of you who all didn't see it on television, it was a cold, uh, rainy day. But it certainly, and it was very cold last year and clear, but it didn't dampen the spirits of literally thousands and thousands of people who came from all over the nation. And as uh, Congresswoman Burkle just said, the, the scores of young people who were here to celebrate life. And life, as has been mentioned, is a precious gift from God. And not only is abortion wrong, both morally and ethically, it's a really bad idea. And I know I, from my practice of medicine, I'm an OBGYN doctor, as, as Congressman Smith mentioned. And in the group that I belong to, in the years that I was there, we delivered over 25,000 babies. Uh, myself, almost 5,000 babies. And what I got to see during that time, it's been an amazing transition. When Roe v. Wade was passed, we didn't have access to ultrasound. And as ultrasound came along from just a little gray blur that you were able to see to now in 3 and 40 ultrasound that you're able to visualize the fingers, the hands, the movement to see this little person very early on. We can identify a heartbeat at 28 days post conception. And I will defy anyone to tell me that that is not a living, breathing, in utero human being. It's a person that's there that just hasn't been there quite long enough yet. And I remember my practice when when I first began in 1977, at 32 weeks, half of the children died of prematurity at that point. Now, those children live as the same as a term birth. And we're seeing that number push further and further and further back for children younger and younger. And we tend to think of this in our own time. Think about 50 or 100 years from now. Who knows what the technology will provide because it is a precious gift from God that we're protecting. I, I sadly stand here and tell you that 19,500 women in Tennessee in 2008 had an abortion. That's just in one state. Th the rate is going down. So I think that in across the nation it's going down, but it's far, far too many. And we've just heard a number, 54 million, that boggles my mind about how many people that is. And I, I can tell you, as, a, as an, having had the opportunity to live in the community I have for 35 years, and to watch young babies that I have delivered grow up to be teachers and coaches and doctors and, uh, and friends of mine. Many of them are close personal friends that I have delivered. I've watched them now take their children to soccer matches and to, 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 um, to school plays and learn to play musical instruments and to add to this nation and to add to the culture of this nation. I can't imagine what this world would be like without them here. And one of the great privileges that I've had in my life was a, a, a person that I know very well at home came to me and he said, Dr. Rowe, do you remember that boy you delivered of mine 20 years ago? I said, yeah, I do. He said, you also had the privilege of nominating him to the military academy, to Annapolis. And I stand here with great pride of probably being one of the few people that's been able to do that. And what if his mother had made a different decision? This young leader in this country, these are the future leaders of our nation. And I, I want to, to finish uh, by saying, I think, the, the, and to me personally, one of the most heinous procedures that could ever be performed on a human being is a third trimester abortion. There is absolutely no medical reason. I stand here tonight and will challenge anybody in this nation of over 300 million people to debate me on this issue. There is no medical indication other than termination of the child's life. There is no reason to do that for any other. So I, I, we have made this challenge before, and I will make it again here tonight. I've yet to be taken up on that. Uh, I think that, that people, I don't see any difference in that, and why wait till the baby is born and then do something? It's called murder then. So I want to thank Chris again, uh, Congressman Smith, from, from being so steadfast in his 30-plus years. And you are changing hearts and changing minds. And it is a true privilege to stand here tonight with my colleagues and to be for life. I can't imagine being otherwise. And I yield back my Dr. time. Rowe, thank